record. And this Susan, meeting is being recorded. Susan, I am going to make you co-host. Susan Gorey is going to be co-host. And she's going to be taking everybody's names for our drawing at the end of the meeting. You have to be present to win. We have two $100 gift certificates to Dakota Pastels. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Since this is our big uh, annual general membership meeting in December, we are going big time on our prizes. So um, on the agenda that some of you opened, um, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Raise your hand because I can't really see everybody if you have any changes or additions. Okay, and just um, a correction on the email notice that went out, um, Barbara is introducing Peggy. She's not doing the presentation on framing. And that was just my, my error on the agenda, it wasn't clear. So um, I'll go ahead and uh, do my 2022 year in review in five minutes. <laughs> you all already. <laughs> um, and I'm going to read part of it because I've had this RSV for like two weeks now and my brain is pretty fuzzy. So I'm going to read from some notes. So 2022 has been a busy and productive year for PAO. With the help of our active board members, regional representatives, and member volunteers, we have been able to accomplish a great deal. For the first time, we offered our members demonstrations by world-class pastel artists in our quarterly general membership meetings, and we gave some really great prizes away. Behind the scenes, our board meets monthly at regular sessions and in special goal-setting sessions. Donna Stevenson, our first vice president, who's not able to be here today, She's led the board in goal planning sessions that have directed us to really achieve many things that we didn't think were formally possible. Uh, thank you to Bill Hack, our treasurer, <coughs> excuse me, has developed fiscal policies and budget planning with long range planning for reserve accounts to cover our operating expenses we are in really good financial shape. Thank you to Judy Richardson, Bill Hack, Mary Wheel, and Stephanie Wierda for the initial planning of our biannual Spirit of Pastel International Exhibition, which was held at the Shehalem Cultural Center. It was our first physical show. We had 234 images entered from 85 artists and 125 were juried in from 30 artists, 13 states and four countries. PAO awarded prizes and pastel goods of over $4,000. A big thank you to Judy, Mary Wheel, Harley Talkington and Susan Gorey, who worked a total of 44 hours packing and unpacking over 200 boxes of paintings. Our education chair, Barbara Sells, Gold Farm, has secured a grant to provide pastel classes to disadvantaged youth, fulfilling our goal of developing a youth outreach program. She will tell you more about this later in the meeting. We have streamlined our communications between board members by using a storage system for documents and document sharing applying and successfully being approved for a free Google nonprofit workspace. This has proved to be a real time saver. We held our annual Paint Where You Are week-long Paint from Life event this year with a follow-up slideshow and reception with some great prizes. Feedback was really positive and members all expressed that they would like to have it twice next year. So we're thinking about maybe a winter and a, a summer one. Congratulations to Willow Balfrey who received master pastelist status in PAO this year. 
We celebrate our members and achievements and successes this year in the pastel world. Thank you to Harley Talkington for publishing our quarterly newsletter. And he's working hard to include all the wonderful news about our members. I hope you're all enjoying that newsletter. And Susan Gorey, who helps put that together also. Uh, Susan keeps us all informed with upcoming events with her fun, engaging email posts. There's an opportunity to fill positions of social media chair, regional representatives in central and southern Oregon areas, north and south. Feel free to email me or anyone on the board and we'll provide you with more information. We have some exciting plans for 2023 and we will be announcing and plan to get you a yearly calendar so you can plan to participate and not miss any of these opportunities. Any questions about any of that? Or any comments? Okay. I'm here. Hey, Peggy. <laughs> I don't know what I had it in my. Okay, well, I'm not going to go into the explanation. It's not, okay, don't worry about not it. Worth our time. <laughs> All right. Well, since you're here, why don't we go ahead and have Barbara introduce you? And um, I'll see if I can collect my thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Barbara, why don't you go ahead and introduce Peggy while she collects oh, herself? Sure. Uh, Peggy Brodigan. Peggy began painting in oils and acrylics prior to pastel. She taught calligraphy and drawing for about 15 years. Dry pastels have been her primary medium ever since. And she loves to draw from life and occasionally uses oil pastels. She has been teaching weekly classes and occasional workshops at the Kirkland Art Center for over 25 years, uh, but now via Zoom. Uh, Peggy welcomes artists new to pastel to join classes. She has been represented by the Issaquah Gallery in Washington and was also employed by the gallery for over 20 years. It was there that she learned professional framing of all mediums. Welcome. Welcome. Hey. Good to have you. <laughs> I had to get my coffee. <laughs> Excuse me. Good morning, everybody. I'm sorry for the uh, confusion on my part, but let's get right into it. Um, maybe some of you have uh, downloaded and read the um, papers that I sent to Susan and, and Janice uh, that uh, explains my method of, uh, oh, excuse me, can everybody please mute except for Janice? <laughs> Let me just ask everybody, I just uh, pinned Peggy. Do you all see just Peggy now? No. You see a big Peggy. <laughs> no, she's not uh, spotlighted. Okay, let me try again, because like, she is on my screen. Um, is there for a gallery. And let's go back to her. You know what? So, there we go. I lost her. Oh, Peggy, where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay, so I have, I don't have Donna here to tell me what to do. So what should I do, Peggy, to spotlight you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so I have a uh, remove pin. Okay, so I have spotlight for everyone. I could click that. When, when Peggy speaks, then How about she now? Yeah. Yes, if you go up to view now and go on speaker view, we see a big Peggy. <laughs> okay, so go up to your right hand. She's upper. fine. No, she's on, on big screen now. Okay, good. Yeah, I am. Okay, Peggy. Okay, yeah, I just don't need all the feedback that I'm getting from some of the... Um, microphones okay i'm not you're not going to see me in a minute i'm going to flip my camera down uh to my table this is a new experience uh, because of course framing is done on a flat table not on an easel so um you're going to get one view and it's going to be a piece of cardboard at the moment that um 
And after that, all you're going to see is my hands and hear my voice. So here we go. Down, 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 down. Now I'm going to get this all straight. Let's see. I don't need that. I need, come on. This worked with my camera earlier. But I need to get this all square in the screen. Okay, that should, that should work just fine. Okay, so you're just seeing a piece of cardboard. Um, cardboard is something that if you're working on a table, as I am, and you don't, whoops, why did that happen? You don't want your table cut. This is bizarre. Okay, I'm gonna move my whole thing over a bit. Best laid plans, folks. I have tried this several times. in the last week and okay one more little move this way and it should be right okay whoa it'll be okay what i'm going to be demonstrating are small frames small items because of the constraint of showing something flat. One of the things that um, I'm, I'm gonna pretty much go down the, the order of um, in which one starts preparing your work for a painting with a uh, mat on it. I discussed at length mats in that paper. And if someone has a question about that, um, you can ask me. In the meantime, I want to show you what happens when you have three, the three different types of mats, the regular mat, the uh, archival mat, and the acid-free mat. Over time, how it changes. I have a very old photograph that was, um, one more bit of light here, okay. A very old photograph that was framed many, many years ago. See all this yellow? That was once white. That is a regular mat, uh, foam board. And right next to it is a regular mat. They yellow. They have gases that um, emit from them. And they will eventually um, call what's it's called fringing. It will make it'll ruin your paper <laughs> eventually now that's a regular mat board and a regular foam pour um this piece right here is an acid free foam board it's only very slightly different in color from the archival um foam board that's out here this one is an old piece of um, archival. So it really, for the most part, it's gonna be okay to use regular foam board if that's what you um, can afford and want to use. This one over here is the one that some fussy galleries prefer, but it's really up to you. Um, I know people that use both of these. Uh, you just say acid free and too many people confuse that with meaning archival or museum. This is archival museum, and it's the one by Bainbridge, and it's called Art Care Museum Board. Okay, so those are the three different kinds of uh, mounting and matting surfaces. Well, of course, then there's also regular mounting board too, which will not be a good thing. Okay, so that's that one. And now let's get into matting um, with, framing with a mat. I have here 
a mat that I think came um, with a probably a wow. Well, I'm going to see. Here we go. You don't need to see the whole thing, but you will see the whole thing if I get this just right. Geez, oh, Pete. How many times did I practice this? Okay. This is a regular, uh, it came with a, a frame that I wanted. And so this part was separate from this part, which when you're doing your own matting, you don't want that because even though they are exactly the same size, if you happen to have cut your own mats ever, you know they can slip. So we use what is called the ATG double tack applicator. And after you cut your mats, put a little bit of, come on, there we go. Oop, some days, it, I just put a new tape in there. That's my problem. There we go. Don't want to get it down in this area. Just and it doesn't take a lot on the four sides. Some people go all the way around. It isn't necessary. And then you line them up. Be sure it's nice and square before you go. that and now it's not going to come off. Now on the other side, I pre-mounted pre what's called the reveal. Okay, and come on. And I'm looking upside down. Boy, I should have done a really small one. You can see right here, is a piece of foam board. And right here is a piece of foam board that I have attached with that mat, uh, ATG gun. And honest, Janice, I have practiced this. I'm not a camera, not Zoom. Hmm. Now I know. Okay, so here's all you do. If you cut your foam board um, the same size as your, I got a quarter of an inch smaller than your inside mat, which in this case was the blue mat. You put the long, well, if you want to have a landscape painting, you put the long side on first. Then you attach the short sides, which obviously have to be cut more narrow. So you just take a TG gun, get some tape on there, line it up with the outside edge of your mat. Press it in place. And the reason for doing it this way with the, I call it the pillars. If over time, and this is a big if, it comes apart at the top or bottom, it helps, these help keep it in place. So I'm now I'm gonna put the tape on the other one. And I'll show you how I finish off. And if these two pieces don't quite meet, it's okay because, whoa, okay. Before you press too hard, make sure it's actually on there. Because sometimes it's just enough over an edge that if your frame isn't an honest eighth inch allowance in it, um, it won't go in the frame. Now we'll use some of the artist tape two, which is acid free and very sticky.
and just put that. Oops, I got it too long. On there. This also helps to hold it all together. Okay, one. See, so had a dirty finger at some point on that one. Okay, there's one down there, and then I'll pick it up. And this is ready to go over a painting. Last side. So you can see that if you buy ready-made frames that have a mat with them and you like the mat, you can use it. This is now ready to be placed over a pastel because that's my board. I'm using just a plain uh, piece of green mat board here so you can really see the difference. Let's see. And within there is a little lip that any dust can fall on. Okay, so that is framing with a mat that is a wooden, a uh, wooden paper mat. You can also frame, this is already done, and this is a little bit more tricky. This is a silk mat that has been. Um, mounted over bevel cut foam board. In this case, it's the 3 16 foam board. This is an old, old, old gouache that I did. Um, it can be very uh, effective <laughs> on some paintings, especially if you use white linen. This happened to, this, is, this was one I wanted to keep just because I don't do gouache very often. And so um, it was in our home in old. Issaquah. But yeah, um, linen mats are fun to do. In fact, um, I would, I get, if you have a really old a pastel journal, <laughs> Deborah Secker wrote an article about uh, matting. And uh, she knew that I did this. And so I have a piece that's featured in that one. You can also um, wrap it just around. Um, a piece of mat board that's been bevel cut and have a nice appearance too. But finding the right fabric can be any kind of fabric you want. So there isn't a problem finding fabric. So that's matting um, uh, or how to prepare your mat for framing. Unless you have uh, or have done your own mats and been really happy with them, um, it's easiest to just buy them from any number of places that um, you haven't received the paper yet, but I did another really long research into the resources for framing. And so things like this ATG gun and the next things that I'm going to show you, uh, I've researched three different places. There's probably more, uh, Amazon, Dick Blick, and um, Jerry's Artorama. And the prices there are present day rounded to the nearest dollar. Um, and so you have some idea of what this is going to be uh, as an expense for you. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is actually, where'd it go? Um, here it is. Show you how to frame no. without a map in two different ways. In this case, and it should show up. One of my problems at present is um, we moved a year and a half, a year, yeah, a year and a half ago. And um, I had a full frame studio there that was all um, set up, ready to go. And I had a lay down, lay down. I had a uh, anyway, 
I have a paper and glass wall mounted cutter that has not been mounted yet because we've been doing a lot of renovation in this house and the room that it's gonna go in um, is not ready to have uh, any framing equipment in it. So I am um, limited to the types of glass that I have on hand right now. Where's my, there's my camera. Let's see, you can't really see. Ah, this has gotta go, okay. This, I'm gonna go like this. That's the wrong way, that's the wrong way, that's the wrong way, this. Oh, there we go. Whoa. And there we go. Huh. Okay. So you can see this small little painting. Believe it or not, this happens to have museum glass sitting on it. Why is that moving? I haven't moved anything, Janice. Why did that move? That's weird. Ghosts. <laughs> Must I know. I, I'm not touching it. <laughs> Honest, I'm not touching it. Oh, That's weird. Look at that. There's, no, there's not a breeze here. Huh. There, that's oh, good. Yeah, ghost. Uh, I'm not touching it. See, here's my hands over here. <laughs> okay, I have never had this happen before. And I do Zoom classes all the time, vertically. Okay, anyway, right now I have a piece of museum glass sitting on top of my painting. I was really lucky to be able to find it last uh last night in amongst all my stuff then it just happens to fit over this painting this painting is already mounted on art care foam board foam board you can see the bright white underneath it so here's what we're going to do hopefully you'll be able to see it um i like to use the white art care or framers to tape because it's easiest to see up against the glass. But this also comes in a um, clear color and is readily available in all the places I've mentioned. Come on, where? Okay, and now it's right there. This stuff is so sticky, it really likes to. Okay. And by the way, red wrapper ties are the way I keep it from doing that. Just put it, I so red, tap, red wrapper ties have a purpose. Okay. Why is you're gonna to have to stop floating? I can't <laughs> do this if you're gonna float. Very, very carefully. Try to get only one eighth of an inch of the glass covered. A little bit more than an eighth won't be a problem. It can be. Now here's where I recommend highly um, first making sure that there's okay. Uh, making sure that um, I recommend highly working on a small piece at first because it's easy to turn this over now. Yep, you can see it. Okay, now you're gonna start in the middle, pull up tight. And I do like this to make sure it's sharp against the edge before I finish it off. Okay. 
Now, some people aren't tape challenged. At the gallery, I learned to laugh a lot and my teammates did too because I'm really good at getting tape all over my fingers and then not able to do anything about it. So there's oh, one. Oh, Peggy, Pam Bergara yes. says, the newer iPads follow your voice and move the camera. You can turn that off. Oh. Interesting. Huh. So I have to keep my voice right in one place. Yep, I'm over here. What happens if I stay right here? And now I have sun glaring on my in my face, so I can't see anything. I will I will keep that in mind for future because um, I don't want to try to get over there right now. Okay. So this is square to the paper, isn't it? Is Janice, is this square to the paper? Yes. Okay. It's on a can't for me. Okay, so I will just stay right here and I will talk right here and I'll work like this. Okay, I'm gonna do this next edge. Oops. And the glass has already slipped a little bit. There we go. Again, bring it down. Although most edges of frames are cover more than an eighth of an inch, there is the occasional one that just gives you a really, really skinny amount of leeway. And that's why I recommend the eighth of an inch too bad my old iPad bit the dust literally we have some kittens that are about nine months old but my little boy is fascinated with electronics <laughs> and it's a cat he likes to make things move. So I have an app that I um, allowed them, him, to play. It's for cats. It was on the table here in the sunroom. And I needed something out of the kitchen, got up, wasn't even thinking. And the next thing I heard was crash. And the iPad was on the floor, upside down with a shattered screen. So off to Apple, Bob and I went. And of course it's not repairable. And so I have the newest, latest version of an iPad. And there's things on it that I didn't know existed. And now, thanks to Janice, I do know one more. Thanks to Pam Bricotta. She's the one that told us about it. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> Jeez. So I'm, I'm being really careful to stay right where I am. Now, one thing about museum glass, and that's what this is, um, is right along one edge of it, a, a full sheet of it, it tells you which side is, is up and which side faces the um, artwork, which is a good thing because let me tell you, um, it can be difficult if you're not used to using it to, to know which is which. The other thing you need to do before you put your glass on there, which I forgot to mention, is make sure every little speck that you don't want to see in your painting is removed. 
know, how dust can fall. Well, sure enough, on this one, I found some little bits of the yellow gold in the dark, dark blue. And I thought, oh crap, that's gotta go. So I, I moved that. <laughs> and now for the last little piece. Unfortunately, I don't have, boy, it's sure a good thing I didn't do what I was gonna do. I don't have a frame for this particular one that I could find. <laughs> and I was gonna go this morning quickly over to Beard's Framing and get an off the rack eight by 10 frame. And I wouldn't have been here when <laughs> Janice called me to say, uh, uh, you're late. Uh, Sharon has a question. What yes, is Sharon. What is the feature of museum glass that tells you which side faces painting? Where is it? It's what it's, is the feature? What is the feature? It's words. It says, um, now that I've covered them up, this side faces artwork. Score on other side. It's it's okay. written right along the edge. But it's not on a whole piece, for instance. Uh, I purchased um, 18 by 24 um, museum glass. And so it's only on parts of it. So my way of marking the rest of the glass is I take um, a Sharpie and I just make a black, a black line, you know, a little on along the edge. And that tells me this side goes towards the artwork. I do the same thing with um, uh, conservation uh, refraction control glass, which is less expensive than this. Um, I just mark it along the edge when I when the writing is gone. I just mark along the edge the rest of the glass that I haven't used with a black Sharpie. And that tells me this is where the writing was. So this goes towards the artwork. I do have a piece of that glass here somewhere. Pam, Pam Bricotta has a tip. Uh, yeah. however, she says, however, make sure the frame covers the museum glass text on the edge. Well, yeah, that won't be hard because that is that is so close to the edge. I've never had the, the text show, even if I frame it in such a way that the text is at the top of the painting. I've never had a frame so narrow. In fact, it would be kind of dangerous to have that on a pastel of any size. I've never had um, I've never had that happen. The the Oh, here's the frame right here. Part I'm talking about. This part right here. Where am I? This part right here. Right there. The the lip that that hang that uh, covers your painting has almost always. And I wish. Well, this painting would not have gone in this frame at all. Let me see. Maybe I can fit it this way. Nope, can't even bend it that way. But as you can see, when I flip this over, that edge is well covered. So in talking about frames now, should have had an even smaller one. Okay, the depth here, where am I? The depth is called the rabbit. That's the edge. You need to have a depth, especially if you have one that is matted with a double mat and foam board mount. That is, and then you have a reveal. So you need to have a minimum, bare minimum of a half inch deep or deeper 
to easily get it in the frame and then be able to put the brads in to hold everything in place. Excuse me a minute. I have a dog that's scraping on my glass and it's not a good thing for the glass. I'm gonna get my husband to get him out of there. Bob, who is scratching on the glass? Can you get him out of here? He doesn't want out, he just wants to come see me. No, I don't need a doggy assistant. Okay, come here, oh, this chair. So one of the things to really think about is how deep this is and how are you going to frame it? The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use something that's not this wrapped method, like this, the sandwich little piece. I'm going to show you how to use pieces of frame tech product. One is called channel spacer and one is called econo spacer. Yeah. Nope. Yep. Okay. And where did that piece of glass go? Oh, it's right up here. Okay. This happens to be <laughs> a piece of the uh, glass that I had cut off the marking, and so you can see my. You've gone off the screen. We can't see you. We can't oh, see. I'm sorry. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's weird. All I had to do was sit down. <laughs> okay. Cleaning glass. You want to use a product that does not have ammonia in it. This one happens to be True View premium clean that I get from the wholesaler, but any uh, uh, glass cleaner that doesn't have ammonia, uh, this is ammonia free, soap free. It leaves no residue. It's um, static free and non streaking. So if you can get this, it's really good stuff. If it's not, just keep the ammonia thing in mind and don't use that. Now I'm gonna show you, now that I know, I'm gonna take most of this off, but since I'm not really using this glass yet, I'm not going to take it all off because I'm gonna show you that it really is easy. You can use almost anything. I don't use paper towels because even, even the best Viva or Costco or a lot of them that don't have Lint that goes all over. This happens to be Costco. I'll go. Okay. Am I working on the right side? Yeah. Okay. It comes off. So you don't have to be thinking about, oh, is that gonna show anything or it won't. As long as you keep it close to the edge, it can even wiggle. But if you, if you have a dry towel, it doesn't take it off. So you wanna make sure your glass is incredibly clean before you ever put it on anything. Now this one, as I said, is a piece of museum glass, but I think when I hold it up like this, on this side, which is the side that's on the front, I think I might have seen a scratch. And scratching is the downside of true one that's called the uh, museum glass. It does scratch rather easily. Oh, no, it was not scratched, that's good. Okay, 
If I was framing this, I would be really super fussy because I see a thumbprint up here, which can be avoided by wearing white gloves. which I've tried in the past and it just <laughs> it wasn't something we did at the gallery. Oh yeah, I do see a small scratch on that, but I would be willing to bet that it's so small and over there, it's not gonna be something that would be in the, a problem. Okay. So this is the side that faces the artwork. And you can use on something this size, this is the frame space that has the little piece of adhesive on it. Very easy to use, you pull that off. and you put it on. Now, this piece is, um, I'm just gonna put it on like that. And you just press down and it's in. You want to cut it to size first. It's really easy to cut. Yeah, I will do that right now. With a mat knife. This is the X-Acto knife that I recommend. And why the X-Acto brand? Only because I've used them forever and they have, they just, they last very, 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 very long. You just twist that, pull that out and replace the blade. Then you screw it down in tight and you're good to go again. When the gallery closed after 25 years in business and I bought all of the equipment. Now, can you see where in, Janice, can you see where I've placed the knife? Yes. Okay, you just score. Well, we could see it, but now it disappeared again. Oh, can you see it now? No. Um, where do I have to move, right or left? Um, because I'm holding still. You need to move my left and forward. Keep going there, that's good. Okay. There. Okay, hold still Peggy, don't move. Okay, so you just score it. Right, ooh, squeaky squeak, right there. Then it snaps that easily. and you have your piece, first piece cut. You put, put these on this very same method that you used for um, framing with a mat when you put the reveal, reveal onto the mat. You put the um, whatever's going to be your top and bottom on, but you put your top on and you put your pillars on and then you put your bottom on. Or you can put the top and bottom on and kind of fuss with how long is that in the middle? Done that too. But once that's on there, I'm just going to tap this right in the middle here because it'll hold it good enough. Now you have a space so that your painting does not touch the glass. Come here, somebody. Come here. This won't touch the glass. It'll sit on there right like that. Well, like that, but that's the idea. This, this is a, a, an economical, because it's an um, easy way to do this method. However, even graphics, uh, not graphics, but uh, frame tick. Even, even the manufacturer of this product 
does not recommend using this spacer on anything larger than about um, 16 by 20 at most. I personally only do things that are up to about 11 by 14. The reason, and even they admit, they use the best glue possible, but all glues eventually begin to dry out and you really don't want this to slip. Okay. And once you've touched it all the way across, it can be really hard to remove. Let's see if I can even, yeah, I got it. Okay. The one I use more frequently is this, it's called, oh dear, a cat chewed that in. <laughs> it's called uh, the um, channel spacer. And it, it, I know you can't see it until I do it. It has, a channel on this side and a channel on this side. And each one of them, this is um, about an eighth of an inch. If I use this side down and if I use the other side, it's ever so much skinnier, just ever so slightly less than an eighth. I just make sure I use both sides the same whenever I put it on. It isn't difficult. This is easily cut. You can use a mat knife, but it's also really easy to use a garden shears and just snip it right there, either way. So in this case, let's see if I can do this. Can you see the edge of the glass, Janice? Yes. Good, okay. So the side, since this faces the artwork, you need to have a side that has the depth on that side. Okay, so here we go. Oops. And that the cat chewed is not going to work. Okay. Okay, so I need to like the first little bit is never the easiest part. Okay, cat, what did you do? Let me figure this out. It does need to go like this, oh boy. Okay, I'm gonna show you how to cut this first, I think. <laughs> I think scissors is also think about it. Scissors. Here we are. Okay. Pops right off. Now I have a non kitten chewed piece of plastic. And okay. Come on. This is why people don't prefer this one. It can be tricky to get it started. There we go. Once it's started though, it's really easy to use. And now I have a ledge right on this side, which is where the painting is going to be, but it is smooth to the glass on the outside. Generally speaking, I cut these um, ahead of time and it really doesn't matter which one. You can go just right around the edges if you want to, to get them on. The last one will be your trickiest because you're be going to be working against, uh, in this case, let's say it's on this side. You have, this is gonna be the last side you do. You have to measure from here where the, um, plastic is down to the bottom where the plastic is across the bottom of it and then slide it in. The beauty of getting the clear is any gaps that you might have, which are going to be really small, they're not going to show because it's clear. This also comes in black. Both of them also come in black, which I also have. 
Um, and sometimes that's just what I want to use. So this is how to frame without a mat and without a package, but with a spacer. This method is what probably 99.9% .9 of galleries or um, frame shops will want to do. The packaging right straight up against the glass, it's still in the, in the framing industry, a big no-no. It doesn't make sense to me, but it is. I'll use this method on smaller pieces, but anything that's bigger, I use spacers and this spacer specifically, because to me, a bigger is 12 by 16 and bigger. This particular one isn't gonna come off if the glass breaks at any time. It's easy to remove these or let, for any reason that you might want to remove the glass. Maybe you wanted to change the glass and still use your spacer. You can reuse this spacer. You cannot remove the one with the adhesive. So that's the three methods that I know of, of framing pastels. One with mats that have a reveal, one that are in a package, right up flat against the painting, and one with a spacer where it isn't right against the painting. Put this in here like this. Now it's got a double, <laughs> but it, it works. Either one, any one of them work. It's whatever you want to do. I have a small piece that I'm actually, last night, because my next uh, illustration is, if you would like me to, body amount, the artwork. Hmm? How do you mount the artwork? Just to yeah. let you know, you have about 10 more minutes. I have 10 more minutes. Okay. Mounting the artwork. Thank you. For... Yeah. I don't need to talk to you about any of that other stuff on that first page. Um, for those of you who don't have this printed out yet, this is the method for a mat with a reveal. Okay. Um, with that. Okay. So now we're going to quickly. Um, do you want. Janice, or oh, does anybody want me to show you how to use the graphics double tack mounting paper? Since I only have 10 minutes. And I'm well, that, that would be for mounting paper for your yeah. pastels, right? That yeah, I have this I have this pastel that has not been mounted. And I have double tack paper. And I have um, And I'm going to mount it. Well, actually, I have a double pack paper already. Let me do this because I have this all ready to go. Okay. I think that would be good. Okay. Okay. I have this little piece right here. The double tack paper comes in sheets and it has paper on both sides, like this. I, I actually use these extra papers uh, when I am um, not ready to actually finish something off. It makes a good cover sheet. Pastel doesn't stick to it, I found out. Or if it does, it's my hair. It's also a good one for, hmm, let me see if I want to do an extra little press to make sure there's no pastel that's gonna come off. Yeah, almost nothing came off. Anyway, this is, when you, when you use double tack mounting paper, okay, now I'm gonna take this off. My method is to put it first on my mounting board. I can use, this happens to be a piece of uh, museum uh, mat board 
that I no longer use. When they closed the gallery, they got rid of a lot of that stuff. It was free. I took what I wanted. I don't use it anymore. Um, so the backside of it becomes a good mount for things. If I want a narrow mount instead of the foam board or the gator board mount. So this is an archival product, the graphics double tack, and so is the mounting board. So is my paper. Well, no, it's this one happens to be um, UART 320. But anyway, I recommend cutting your mounting board, whatever it is, about two inches bigger than what you're going to put on it because Sometimes it can be a real challenge when you have a bigger painting to get it carefully lined up with an edge. I'm pretending that this edge right here in, that I've done in, in pencil is a piece of mounting board that I cut to size. If you have a really big piece and it tends to want to kind of bow somewhere as you're putting it down, it can be a challenge to get it on there squarely. So if you cut your mounting board a lot bigger by about two inches all the way around, if it's not square on there, it's no big deal to then trim it square. So, but in this case, it just goes on like that. Now you take this and Lay that on there. Whoops. Now for, I have a brayer that I will roll over a lot. I also have a rolling pin <laughs> for smaller pieces, but this one's really small and I can use enough pressure to get that on there. And then last night after, Here's another thing though, why this is so much bigger. After I got this all said and done, I thought this is really a small painting. I bet this might be one that I would like to actually cut a mat because I still do have some um, just off white mat board that looks like linen, that is archival, that is museum. And once I get my mat cutter, back, which is still in my husband's workshop. We won't go into that. And he can't hear me. Um, anyway, when that comes back, then I can finish this off. Because it is now securely on there. It's not going anywhere. And another thing I didn't write about is these nice White erasers, really white erasers, work really good for things like this. If I wanted to, it doesn't matter because this will, I know, I don't know that this is gonna be put into um, a 12 by 12 because that's what this whiteboard is frame, but I have it, measured in such a way that if I want to have it in a 12 by 12, um, I have it. So there's more at the bottom than there is at the top. This is one of my rulers. My poor little, very ancient T-square. Doesn't have much of a square anymore. This thing is older than dirt just like me <laughs> and it's finally broken so so much that i when preparing for this i ordered two of these 112 and 118 inches from amazon which will be here next weekend why it's taking longer than most things i don't know but that's three inches that's little, yeah, three and a quarter inches, just cause. And the bottom I think is four and something. Four and, four and a quarter. Hmm. 
this was done late at night. So I can, I can mat this, or if I don't want to mat it, I can just trim off all the way around with my mat knife and put it directly into a, this is a weird size, six by four and a half. It was a quarter sheet of nine by 12 that I did in Laura Pollock's um, workshop, which was a lot of fun. Okay, you have about five more minutes. Okay, so let, let, I have no more to present here that I can think of. Um, I didn't, oh, I do too, um, but I'm just going to show them to you. I don't have to show these things. I don't have to. This is um, the infamous finger pincher. If, get your fingers in the way. Here's a frame. Okay, everything is in there and I need to secure everything in there. Okay, you put this in here and you, okay, where's my, where's my brats? If you buy this, it is made in such a way that it will hold the brads, but it also has a dip here that holds, I mean the pointers, the, the metal points. It'll hold them. And that's what they recommend that, it, that, that they want to sell you. But they're a little bit spendy. And these wire brads work very well for two reasons. One, it's right in there and it's magnetic. So it's not going to fall out. So you put this on here, but that's too close. So now, come on. Doing this at an awkward angle doesn't help. You put it in there and you get it so that it, the brad just about touches this edge. And you screw this down. Ooh, boy, did I get that loose. Okay, now, here we go. And now you can go, come on. Why are we not working today? Because I didn't tighten this. And you do want it, you do want it square with the whole thing. Okay, that's where I wanted it. That's where you're going. Okay. And I'm gonna hold it because it doesn't have anything under it to hold. When you have everything in there, you just press on the handle and the, this goes in a lot further, obviously a lot further. This is more likely to stay in place than those pointers. If you're going to use the pointers, here's the gun with the pointers already loaded. I'm gonna get up here and I'm going to take it just that board. Okay, and you just you have that in place. This is fast. This is soft wood. This is probably going to stay in place. But can I wiggle it loose? No. If you have a harder wood, these don't always like to go in. The brads aren't happy about it, but you can get a brad in a lot deeper than you can the pointer. Ha, ah, I just wanted, there you go. And it's, it's not going anywhere. What I do when I'm finished though, is I will take, I'm gonna use the black tape because you'll be able to see it. I cover these with tape. So if they ever do come loose, they're not gonna be rattling around in the back of your painting. I use this black tape for things like this, where I just want something that's gonna hold things in place but not be too tacky. That's why I like this tape. Had I used this, I'd have torn that paper getting it off there. Your choice. Okay, 
I think that does it. Um, how to your choices of these things? Oops, two aside. Okay, you have this attacher, this applicator. These are available at any hardware store. And um, in the paper that you will receive eventually, if not already, because Susan is so super great about sending things out, um, all of this is in the resources, it's framing resources, which is this paper like that. Okay, talk about all those things. Now, do we have questions, Janice? We can open it up for questions. Does anybody have any questions for Peggy? It couldn't have been that clear. <laughs> it was very clear, Peggy. That's a great <laughs> presentation. I learned some new things and I've been framing for years. <laughs> oh, good. I was afraid you might be bored. <laughs> um, I have a question. Yes. Uh, have you used aluminum composite panels for mounting? No, but I've heard of them. I, um, I, I'm not sure what the advantage would be. It's very most. sturdy. It never works. Well, that's true, but I have never seen gator board warp. I, I can see it for some really, you know, oversized paintings. That would be important. Um, I, I, I can't see it for smaller paintings um really but that's an interesting concept <laughs> okay uh sharon says thank you peggy it was a very clear and helpful presentation thank you sharon uh, bill hack says excellent thanks peggy <laughs> i tell you what if anybody has any further questions as they come along or if they have a problem um, I think you all have my email address. I forgot to put that. It, well, I know it's in our um, roster. So if you have the roster, you have my email as, address, but it's really easy. It's Peggy's Pastels. And it's Peggy with an S and Pastels with an S at gmail.com. Uh, I will help anybody as much as you need that I can do long distance, or maybe we just get together on Zoom and do it because I have a Zoom account myself so um i can do that kind of thing okay, i we'll just have sure that your email gets out go ahead where where would i purchase a one of those brad guns the gun okay that is all in the framing resources uh paper that is coming in email to oh, you um, okay under under here i have it's uh called this is the um Let's see, uh, framers, let's see. Oh, this is under, if you, <laughs> I put it down on this way. Should haves, you won't regret having. And if you're feeling a bit more flush with funds, that comes under that heading. Uh, the Flesher Frame Master Point Driver is what it's called. Now there are other brands. I have never used them. This is, a, the things you're seeing here are industry standard. Um, things that you'll find in most frame shops. Some of them have, well, I don't even know if they have any better than what these are. Um, this little guy is at Z Amazon, it's $92. Dick Click is 113 and Jerry's is 122. The points come separately in a package of 3000. Amazon's are 34, Dick Click is 30 and Jerry's is 22. This little guy is the under the you won't regret. This is Fletcher Frame Mate fitting tool. Um, Amazon doesn't have it. And I don't recommend the Logan brand of this. Um, Dick Blick is 50 and Jerry's is 48. Um, so there's about a hundred, well, 75 to a hundred dollars difference between these two things. There are times that this bigger one is uh, not gonna be a safe thing to use because if you have a narrow frame, I've seen those points go right through it. 
Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On a really, really soft wood. It was it was quite a surprise that day that happened. That was back at the gallery. That was a, oh crap. <laughs> Gotta cut a new man frame. Sorry, Al. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So I have the, the prices I have where to buy of all of these and the and these being available at your frame store. There's, uh, I don't remember how many are in here. It's 1.75 ounces, a lot. Yeah. And they're really inexpensive. So as a, as a just starter out of person, this might be a way to go over the gun because there's the gun and here's the box of points, framers points. But okay. they're all, but these, and, and there's different brands of this too. Um, but the one that's for the frame master is identified. Its box will look right there like that. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're welcome. We have some more uh, comments. Uh, Pam Bricotta said this was so informative. Thank you so much. Linda right. Evans says, Peggy, you are a master of precision. Uh, Janice <laughs> Rosenberg says, thanks so much. Very helpful. Jenny Lieberman says, thank you so much, Peggy. So informative. Bonnie McManus says, thanks, Peggy. Uh, Susan Gorey says, thanks. Very helpful. Thanks, Peggy. And Sharon says, thank you for putting the PDF documents together. Great resource. So Peggy, thank you Good. so much. You're it welcome. was very informative and very helpful. And Everyone appreciates all those documents you spent time putting together. Well, um, yeah, they, um, I'm glad to have done it. It was it was a good thing for me to do too because I haven't done it in a long time, and the information that I had already written in document form was probably 30 years old and needed to be updated. <laughs> and so, uh, um, Bithia thank just you. says, "Thank you so much, Peggy. Uh, could you?" quickly speak about attaching the dust cover. Oh yeah, super easy. And I've got it right here. Here's, here's this, I don't have a piece of, and you can use most, any, you can use craft paper. I happen to use, if it's small um, pieces, uh, I have been known to use uh, uh, pieces of uh, Canson paper that I, colors I don't use and happen to be in the packet. Um, you can use, if it's small also, you can uh, have a nice clean uh, uh, paper, brown paper bag. That paper is even stronger than craft paper. Um, but anyway, so here's what you do. You take double back tape and here's where this instrument has a lot of use too. Put it on there, put it on there and it goes right like that all the way around. And then you can take your paper, make sure I have a piece of paper here. Um, oops, come on guys. Final, something else is also useful. If you, oh, if you really need to have something that's a hard backing too, you can use um, foam board. I mean, this happens to be a uh, framing board, but you can get a mounting board that's really thin like this. And if, so if you want a really heavy backing for whatever reason, even that is not gonna come off. This is the expensive way to go, even if you're buying just regular mat board. Um, but it does have, and you can buy it in black also, you can also buy a black uh, poster board because all of the poster board and this board aren't gonna tear as easily as paper. And some galleries really get picky about that. They get very upset by torn paper on the back of a, pa a piece. This will come off because I didn't really push it down. Um, and all they want is your um, mounting board, your brads and they want them to be covered with tape. I hope that explains what you can do there. And 
I can even uh, 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 remove this tape from here now since I don't want to use it at the moment. Okay. So it rolls Thank right you. off. Thank You're you. Welcome. I'm going to uh, go ahead now with the rest of the meeting. Good. I'm going to flip this up and look at you. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peggy. And I want you all to know that Peggy volunteered her time for this and has done it all uh, without payment. So we appreciate oh, it. Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> you didn't need to tell him that, but thank you. <laughs> well, it was very nice of you. <laughs> yeah. I, I okay, suppose. so um, back to the agenda then. I have already done the review. So we're on to the treasury report, Bill Hack. Okay. Um, this is just a quick summary of uh, the past three months, we haven't had a formal uh, treasurer's report. Um, currently, our cash on hand is $22,706.29. Um, in the past three months, we had a total net income to our um, account of about $559 um, after expenses were taken from our income. Um, interesting, when we started getting our uh, our membership dues for next year, you know, are coming in pretty quickly now. Um, two things happened that were unusual. One, we had a, a donation of $150, which we're, uh, we're thankful for. And one of the people had uh, made a double payment in their membership. And that was trans, that person uh, left it, decided to leave it as a donation. So we had $185 in donations, which is unusual. Um, everything else is our normal expenses. So that's uh, our current status is again, $22,706. We'll probably uh, end the year somewhere around $24,000 in the bank, assuming our normal uh, membership <laughs> flow occurs in December. Thank you, Bill. Does anybody have any questions for Bill? Okay, great, thank you. Um, membership report, Donna can't be here. So uh, Jenny, I think you were gonna uh, read Donna's report. We can't hear you, you on, you're on mute. There you go. There we go. There we are, okay. Um, it's a little bit of a lengthy report, so I think I'm just going to kind of go down some of the, the highlights. The current membership as of November 30th is 179 members. We had 15 new members, which is good. Um, members, membership status at the end of 2021, we had 190 members, of which 27 did not renew, 21, uh, 2021 was an MOX year, uh, members online exhibit, which that's what the MOX is for, possibly attracting temporary members. Um, the geography of the membership uh, is kind of a, a pretty, pretty standard. We're looking at the Central Oregon 10, Coast 6, uh, Northwest 50, South A 23, South B 28, the outer region 61, and um, our representatives, regional representatives are uh, Linda Evans, Linda Chatfield, and we're seeking volunteers um, for the other areas. I do see that Debbie Holland Olson uh, is in the Northern California area, but we're, she's looking to be replaced. And right now, Sue, uh, Steve and Sue Bennett uh, are also looking to be replaced in their volunteer role. Um, member rules, the membership practices of PAO have been documented in writing and shared with the membership at the time of the 2022 annual meeting. Um, paint where you are, uh, the second paint where you are, event was in October, 2022 and had lower turnout and fewer paintings submitted. The side show this year, slide show this year included outtakes, which were well received. Reception attendees were again excited about the event and again proposed holding twice annually. Two changes to this year's event. First, 
paint where you are, including in, included indoors and, and um, photo references. Second was, holding, second was holding the event in October instead of late summer. Um, regional events included <clears throat> regional, represent, re, regional representat representatives met in September to share their member engagement activities. Southern Oregon Regional Members Art Exhibition, seven, May 7th to 30th at, the, at Art Presence Gallery, organized by Steve and Sue Bennett. People's Choice Award was Bonnie McManus. Coastal Plain Air event, proposed by Linda Evans. Potential for our June 2023rd paint, paint the Coast at the Manley Center in Brooking, Brookings, Oregon. Northern California, Debbie Holland Olson, proposes an open invitation, invitational for all members of PAO, potential location Main Street Gallery in Old Town Weaverville, California. Will, at Willow, Braffrey's, Willow Belfry exhibits at this, at this gallery and has been, been well received. Northwest new regional representative, Linda Chatfield has proposed a pastel day once a week in the Woodburn Art Center. More information to come. Thanks, thanks to the volunteers, Lynette Torres, outgoing, Jenny Lieberman, incoming, for volunteering to keep the member roster up to date, Janice, Janice Ellison for spearheading the Paint Where You Are promotion and creating the reception slideshow, Steve and Sue Bennett for their work on the Southern Oregon regions. And that's a complete report. Thank you. Anybody have any questions or comments about that? Okay. There we go. Yeah, see a lot going on. <laughs> All right. Um, new business. Let's see. Um, volunteers for the 2024 nomination committee. Uh, we're in the midst of planning for the succession of president and second vice president. That would be my position and Judy Richardson's position for the 2024-26 term. As Judy and myself have served as founders in our positions for four years by the end of December 23. So we have a year. Um, the two positions are uh, two-year terms. And any member who has been a member for at least one year is eligible to run for this office. And we'd like you to really think about um, contributing to PAO. We have uh, training, we have documents. Uh, if you come forward early enough, we can uh, provide job shadowing. And um, we've worked hard this year to get everything up on our Google workspace. So all our documents are available. And we've done so much work on the infrastructure this, these past two years that um, it'll make your job a lot easier. So think about it. If you're interested, um, just let us know and we would love to have you. Um, the um, election, the roster of candidates will go out in, October or November for you to vote on. Um, we need a nomination committee. So far we have Harley Talkington who has volunteered and we need two other members and the nomination committee will be seeking um, candidates for the nomination. And right now president and second vice president are open and um, not sure about secretary yet i haven't haven't heard yet if um, <laughs> our secretary plans on continuing so um think about it we we'd really like to have you let's see and then next is our um announcement about youth outreach classes and that's um barbara goldfarb and right after that she's going to talk about the lorenzo Chavez workshop. Barbara? Okay, great. Yeah, I'm really excited. We put in an application. I worked closely with Janae Elder, who is in the um, 
in, in the uh, Southern Oregon uh, region. And she's going to be uh, the instructor. And uh, our mm -hmm. intention was to outreach to kids at risk. And we have um, several programs uh, spread out through the area. We have uh, Homeless Families, Maslow Project, we have Life Art, we have um, Rogue Mentoring. So we have a lot of connections and uh, we'd like to um, offer the workshop as one series of five workshops. It's expressive portraiture in pastel. Um, the grants from the Haynes Foundation were, um, there was a large submission, there were over 90 and just over 20 were granted. So we originally applied for $5,000 and we intended to do a series of two um, series of workshops, but we've gotten half the amount, 2,500. So we're going to reconfigure plans unless we could raise more money. We intend to do it sometime in the winter season. And uh, fortunately we are being, um, uh, uh, we're collaborating with Central Art, uh, Central Art Supply and Ebert and her husband are very interested uh, in supporting the project and they'd love to do a third Friday exhibit as well. And, you know, in talking about how to um, bring this together, um, we also thought about offering something to members um, and the community at large to also do an adult workshop in expressive portraiture. And uh, that we're thinking at this stage could be um, separate from the grant, but collaborating mm -hmm. in terms of meeting the kids for the reception and the third Friday and just having a dialogue, you know, what does this mean? What is, what is the art, you know, what's our inspiration and, and what are we expressing? And Janae had a um, really beautiful outline for um, the purpose of each class. So she'll introduce our history and portraiture and look at expressive um, paintings, mark making, colors, light. <clears throat> And uh, she's gonna do a photo shoot where the kids will bring in objects that are meaningful to them that convey some kind of symbolism um, in their life. And I think that's gonna you know, be an exciting kind of bonding with a group and bringing together these themes. So um, that's the stage that it's in now. And uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I think I covered everything on that. Well, thank oh, you so much, for Barbara, for yeah, your work on that. Go ahead. You're welcome. One more thing that um, we wanted to ask, because we are um, dealing with half the amount uh, of funding, um, one of the largest expenditures were supplies. So if anyone has any extra pastels that they would like to donate, you know, any duplicate, oh, if anyone does, we will be so thrilled to, um, to receive anything like that. Uh, it'll really help the budget go a little bit further. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, I'm just getting a call from Central Art and Ebert. Isn't that funny? Um, yeah, so that's the status of that. And uh, were there any questions? I thought I may have seen. Yeah, Ginny? Hi, um, Barbara, I missed when I was taking notes. Who is going to put the actual classes together? You said you were, we were working with Central Art Supply and yeah. you did say that there was a person executing these classes. Who is that person? Yes, it's Janae, J-E-N-A-Y, Elder. And, and, yeah, and Jan actually, Jan and I, we, we studied portraiture with her. She introduced me to portraiture. Okay. She's a young... Um, really gifted teacher and artist. She exhibits a lot and okay. uh, she's just delightful. I'm, oh. I'm thrilled to have her doing it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and I saw there might be donations for, uh, and Sharon took classes with her too, for supplies as well, paper supplies, anything that you think is in good condition and, and can be used would be fabulous. We'd be really appreciative. I have an almost full roll of gray cans on me tints, 40 by 60, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, six, it's 
60 inches wide on a roll. Mm. If yeah. I can figure out how to get it to you. Get it. So you yeah. are in Washington, right? I am. I'm in yeah. Southeast Olympia. Um, but yeah, my, it was actually uh, given to me by my sister who mm. uh, unfortunately uh, had to give up pastels because of her mm -hmm. eyes. But um, yeah, so I, I have that. I have a lot of pastel. I have a lot of stuff that I could send your way. One quick question. Yeah. Are you interested in oil pastel at all? Because that's one I think I used with kids. Yeah, this will be soft pastel. Oh, okay, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. I, and I understood why, but I, I have that to get rid of also. <laughs> okay, we'll keep that in our future thinking. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking at the chat and Sharon says, what an amazing program. Very creative and definitely needed. So impressive. And she wants to know if you need paper supplies. And she also says that Janae is wonderful and that she took classes with her. Beautiful. That will be so wonderful. Yeah. And um, my contact information is uh, online um, and I could be reached easily. And then if you put a contact phone number, I'll call. I'll call you and we could talk. I really appreciate it, it's wonderful. Janice Rosenberg says, I will solicit my classmates at Central Art for supplies. Thank you, thank you. Great. Okay. Okay, moving on to Lorenzo. Yeah, let's go to exhibition and workshops next. Okay, um, so we've also uh, been in contact with Lorenzo Chavez. And um, he just emailed me this morning. Uh, he said, you know, he'd like more of his bio in the, um, I guess on the website, because I guess we thought everybody knows him, right? <laughs> so, um, so I'll do a little intro because I read this, um, he sent and uh, it's not so much a bio, but I, I like this. My art reflects my deep passion for the landscape of the American West. I want the emotion I feel to come through in the surface textures of the art. The colors, textures, and light of the Western landscape inspire and guide my work. It is the simple glimpses into nature that move me to create. And um, he's internationally known, um, and he's known as a very generous person in terms of his um, his time and his attention working one-to-one -one with students at their easel. And, um, you know, and he will cover plein air. It's going to be a plein air workshop. It will be May 22nd, 23rd and 24th from nine to four. If people are interested and flexible, he loves the dusk and dawn. If that seems to be something that will um, will work during the three days that we're, we're together. And it's going to be, uh, again, um, handled through Central Art. And we have the studio arranged as, as a, um, a site where if there's inclement weather, we do have the studio there for those three days. But May, we're really hopeful. We will have a gorgeous, you know, a gorgeous uh, three days then. Um, Central Art is handling the, uh, the um, registration and they just put it up last night and PAO members will be the first to uh, be able to register. Um, unfortunately, they had a glitch where they could not um, give a, a tab where you could go in as a non-member because the price is 425 for members, 475 for non-members. So we have to work on that over the next week. Hopefully we'll figure that out. Uh, I could be contacted if you have friends who are non-members and they're interested in participating. I will put their name in as the registration moves forward. It's a minimum of 12, maximum of 15. We are looking at um, potential sites, maybe a, you know, like a 20 mile radius in the Southern Oregon region down here. And um, if anyone has suggestions, uh, someone just suggested Relic Winery in Jacksonville with alpaca and ponds and views and a, you know, a bathrooms and uh, 
you know. So we're we're looking at uh, you know really setting it up so that people feel, and that Lorenzo feels, you know, inspired by by the setting. I think I covered everything. Uh, oh, and centralartsupply.com. You go into centralartsupply.com and you go into classes and events. And then there's a tab on that page for Lorenzo's workshop. And you can make your payment directly uh, on the site. If there's a problem, I think Linda, you mentioned you had a problem. You could um, try again, hopefully it will go through, maybe call Central Art. If, you know, over the course of, give it till Monday, I have your name that you are, <laughs> you are a particip participant. So um, if there's a problem after that, you could call me and let me know because I'm not directly managing the, the access to the site. Okay. I think I covered everything. Um, yeah. Do people have an interest? I'm just curious in doing the adult workshop possibly with Janae, the portraiture. Jan, I, I am as well. Judy is raising her hand. Oh, great, great. Wish I could. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. oh, great. I see somebody else also. Liz, nice. Nice when you raised your hand. Oh, yay. Okay, that's really nice to hear. Uh, just to let you know, I have a lot of people emailing me trying to uh, register for Lorenzo's workshop right now. And um, I was able to register this morning. If you go to Central Art Supply and you go to classes and you find the Lorenzo um, class, you have to click on it and that takes you to the payment page. And there is a place to pay. I, I don't know why people are having a problem getting to that page. Yeah. Linda, did you try this morning and have a problem? You're um, I, I didn't I, I went this morning just before our meeting here and um, I did all that and nothing came up. So I'll just try it again. Okay, yeah, because I was able to register this morning and the page Good. was just fine. So it Great. looks like it's um filling fast. So if you want to take it, um, it's going to be only 15 spaces available. And we really can't hold it. So once 15 spaces are full, um, that is going to be all we're able to do. So the only way to get into it really is to register. So I just want to let you all know that. <laughs> okay. Um, any more questions or any anything about Lorenzo's workshop or any of Barbara's announcements? Okay. Um, that takes us to. Uh, the Mox exhibition and Eve Miller and Judy, you were here. You're still here. I am. I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, we're really excited to announce that Eve Miller will be our workshop presenter and a judge and the juror of the members only exhibit in October. She's coming from South Carolina, flying out to Oregon. They've never seen her husband have never been here. So they're excited to come out here and explore Oregon. And the workshop will be a studio workshop at Central Art, uh, maximum number of 12 students. The registration for that won't open until after the first of the year. It will be, the theme of the workshop will be color and texture in the landscape. And Eve is about 5'10", 5'11", little short gal, a dynamo of information and energy. She's just She's hilarious. She's, she's a great workshop presenter. I, I got to observe her at IAPS and make a connection with her. So we're pretty excited about that. And that's coming up in October of 2023. So mark your calendars for a studio workshop for those of you who may not be planner painters. And that's about it. Oh, the, we're, oh, the I forgot about the um, SOP exhibit worked great at Shehalem Center. It was um, extremely well received. The sales weren't great, but the show was gorgeous and the facility is gorgeous. So it's, it was worth your time if you got to go up there and view the show, but it was, thank you to all of those who exhibited their works. It was wonderful. And that's all for my report. Thank you, Judy. I had an interruption by a couple of emails. Did you announce the dates for the mocks exhibit? 
I don't have my calendar right in front of me because I'm in the hotel room, but it is October. It's it's a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, or that those dates of the third week of October of 2023. So it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh, for the Miller for Eve right. Miller's workshop. But we don't I don't have the dates on the prospectus yet for the MOX um, show. Okay. That will be coming the year is that gonna is that gonna be the october 12th to november 12th i don't have that calendar in front of me so i can't say for sure are, oh are i you, have i know i've got it right here yeah <laughs> okay unless it's yeah. changed you have it's october it's, it, it's the third week of october which is the 20th 20 uh let's see it's friday saturday sunday right judy i think so yeah yeah that's the 20th 21st and 22nd but the MO, yeah, the MOX, I'm not sure what the dates are. Um, I believe it. Yeah. I would like I have to, the dates. I, <laughs> I have the dates. Okay, what that, are, okay, according to our perspectives, is that accurate? As far as I know, yes. Okay, yeah. then it's October 12th to yeah. November 12th. August 1st is when entry opens. Mm -hmm. September 9th, entry closes. So just yeah. so you can put that on your calendar and, and um, know that that's when that's going to happen. That's our members online exhibition this year. So if you're not a member, you don't be able to enter that ex and exhibit. And it's online, like Jenna said. Yes. Okay. Jenny? I just want to backtrack so I have this right. So the actual dates of the, what it, what were the uh, October 20 October 21 October 22 was that Eve Miller oh yeah that well, what, what is the okay workshop a studio workshop at Central Art in Medford oh, studio workshop gotcha right. thank you guys okay so this is Eve Miller right all right yeah, and I did send you that expanded agenda. Right. Jenny. Yeah, and yeah, that's why I was getting confused. So then the, below that we have the mocks, and that's the actual. We don't have the actual dates yet. Right. No, we yeah. do, and that's on that expanded. Agenda. Okay, that is the actual dates. Correct. All right. Okay. Janice. Yes. Bye. Barbara, I have one more thing that uh, I actually have a note on about Lorenzo Chavez that we actually set up a Zoom uh, workshop on a Saturday, a PAO general membership meeting. Um, right. that's in yeah, March. yeah, we have that. So it's March 4th mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's something else to look forward to. Yeah. Yeah, Lorenzo will be doing a, it's a recorded demonstration that he'll be offering in March. So. That'll be for our general mm -hmm. membership meeting. Thank you for remembering that. Yeah, so there would be a... Okay, well, we're getting close here. Um, I don't know if Harley's here. Is he here? So I don't think Harley's here. Uh, yeah. Susan, do you have anything about the newsletter in particular? Well, we're gathering information now, and uh, it'll be coming out. And we're hoping, actually, to get it out before Christmas this, this month. So um, he's been in contact with various people. And um, so that's in the works. We're working on it right now. Great. And Susan, do you have any announcements about anything else? Um, I don't think so, really. Uh, we'll be sending another email out just to remind people of the member December uh, membership drive. And uh, mm -hmm. so that'll come out on Monday mm -hmm. um, to take advantage of the $35 fee. Um, and then we'll, you know, we'll begin to look at uh, promoting uh, uh, Lorenzo's workshop and, and so forth. Um, so it would be good if we could get that information that Barbara had on Lorenzo so that we can use that for our emails and, uh, in the future. Great. We'll get that to you. I think that's about it. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Um, I, I think there may be a problem on the site. Linda, you said you couldn't sign up for Lorenzo Chavez workshop, right? Yeah, there. I couldn't find any kind of link to get to the application and pay the fee. Well, that, that was this morning before our meeting. 
No, but I was just trying to see if I could figure out if there was an issue and there seems to be because I can get up the um, up to the where I I have it in in the um, in in the uh, what do you call it? Sorry, guys. In the uh, huh. events and classes. Uh, no, the announcement is there and then I've got up to proceed to checkout and I when you, when you hit proceed to checkout, it doesn't take you to checkout page. It takes you back to uh, Central Art homepage. And I've done it four times. You know, it might be that they're getting quite a number of people trying. Yeah, I'm doing it right now and it brought me to checkout. Yeah, but put on hit checkout and we'll see what happens. Well, after I place my credit card, I am on the page where I can put my credit card in. No, that never came up for me. Yeah. What are you working on? I'm on an iPad. You're not doing it on a phone, are you? My, no, I'm on my computer. Computer. Oh. Um, yeah, so I've got yeah. you. Paula said she just signed up. Rick Bonetti just signed up. I think I did. Just, it looks like I did. Just yeah, I think up. just uh, try again, Sharon. Mm. I think All a right. lot of people are signing up, so it might be that you're just getting um, yeah. clogged with other people signing up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Well, I'm just clicking on everything, and it won't take me to the page. Yeah. Go back yeah. in again. Try to go back in again. Okay. Well, I thought, I thought maybe I discovered a, a major problem. If it's just me, I'll mm. keep trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so we're getting close to 12 o'clock and I want to make sure we do prizes. Um, regional reps, though. Um, let's see, Linda's here. Do you have any? And I don't think we have any other regional reps here. Linda, is there anything from Southern? I mean, from, um, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> I, I've reached out uh, to uh, one of our members in Bandon, who I discovered through a gallery, is doing a lot of plain air and has some friends that are all also in the gallery art by the sea. And I invited them to come down uh, just to paint, just, you know, to work together at any time. Um, also, I'm going to be sending Christmas cards to all six of us who are in this region as members. And I'm proposing uh, that workshop for June that would be here on the coast, but it would be all handled by art, uh, the uh, Manly Arts Center. And so people would just bring paintings, paint paintings, and then take them home. So simplifying that, and I'll be presenting that to the Manly uh, at their spring meeting. Nice, Linda. That's a nice way to make personal contact with other people in your region. Seeing real people. Real people. <laughs> uh, Janice Rosenberg asks, will we receive minutes or a newsletter with all of the workshop and exhibit dates? Well, we, uh, we do put in the workshop dates and stuff. Uh, I mean, they'll, they'll be coming up. We can actually make a note. We'll make a note uh, in this newsletter regarding the uh, uh, Lorenzo and uh, Chavez and uh, Eve Miller workshops, but that those will will be notifying everybody on a regular basis. Um, okay. So. Okay. All right. I think that takes us to prizes. Does anybody have anything else before we go there? All right. Um, Susan has been collecting names. You do have to be present to win. We have two. I've been, I've been collecting and then removing as people leave. <laughs> <laughs> we have $200 gift certificates to Dakota Pastels. Drum roll, please. <laughs> okay. Sharon Spinyard. Ooh. Yay. Yay. Sharon <laughs> Spinyard. Wow, that's wonderful. I rarely win anything. What did I win? <laughs> $100 gift certificate to Dakota oh, Pastel. Thank you. Okay. And Ginny Lieberman. Wow. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. Thank and you. they're having a sale right now, too. So you can <laughs> mark your money. Oh, I so need it. 
So I'll be sending you those gift certificates okay. and please let me know that you received it because last month when, or, or the last meeting, mm -hmm. Peter Coons won and I sent him a gift certificate and he never received it because I put his email in wrong. So please let me know if you receive it. <laughs> I will. Thank you very much. Okay. So I really our appreciate next, that. Our next meeting um, is January 28th. And it's at one to three o'clock. That's a Saturday. And Lynn Diefenbach will be our demonstrator from Australia. She does those beautiful florals. And she's just, a, she's so charming to listen to with her <laughs> accent. <laughs> she's a wonderful instructor. So are you Excuse sure to me. For that? When is that? That is um, January 28th, Saturday. No. Nope. Jan January 28th is a Sunday. The 20th here. <laughs> 2023? You're looking at 2023? I am. Yep. Right. All it's right funny there. because with her, she's a day ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, that's let me right. check and see how that worked out. Yeah, she's a day ahead, but how did that work out on our calendar? So maybe well, it, I no, the 28th is Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. January 28th, 2023 is not a Saturday. Yes, yes it, it is. is. It is. Yes, it is. It's on my yeah. Let's be looking <laughs> at 2023. <laughs> <laughs> honest, honest guys, look. <laughs> it's your new <laughs> iPad. <laughs> well, this is my cell phone. Yeah. That's bizarre. <laughs> Maybe oh, your cat licked it. <laughs> okay, folks. Thank you so much for spending your Saturday morning with us. I look forward to it whenever it is. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll send all those notices out. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Janice. Bye. -bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. I'm so excited about my Thank pride. You. Me